from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell in the ABC's studios in Melbourne, where this week I've been able to get back on horseback once again, a pub ride this time, which is the best way to do any kind of horse ride. Two hours ride to the pub, lovely lunch, tether the horses while you're feeding and watering as well, to our ride back. Just the right kind of day for me. Sounds pretty good. You should be at the track somewhere. Get a licence and do a bit of riding. There's a lot of horses in Australia. Uh, there's also a lot of cricketers. Um, some from the West Indies were just horrible the other day. But the <laughs> South African women were outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. That they were. Win that Australia. Yeah. It's Jim Maxwell, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim. <laughs> Good to have you on the show as always. This is Charu Sharma for Akashwani. I'm glad to be back home in Bangalore. And you mentioned horses and studios, uh, Alison. Gosh, what have I been the last week, two weeks? have been absolutely crazy. I can't even begin on those stories and journeys, but just glad to say I'm back home in Bangalore for a day or two. Excellent. Sometimes nice just to be settled, isn't it? Uh, good to see you both. Uh, coming up, we're going to be finding out how one of England's physical disability cricketers manages a condition called dyspraxia. The team have just finished a series in India. But we're going to start by talking about that hotly contested test series between India and England's men because it's finally poised at one apiece with three to play thanks to some dazzling performances from Jasprit Bumrah and the opening bat Yashasvi Jayaswal. Bumrah took nine wickets in the match, including at first innings six for 45, as India bounced back to win the second test by 106 runs in Vizag. And Bumrah, I note, has become the first fast bowler from India to go top of the ICC bowling rankings as well with that. But Jayaswal, well, he became only the third youngest player from India to score a test double hundred at 22 years and 36 days. Only Vinod Kamli and the great Sunil Gavaskar managed that feat at a younger age. Jayaswal adds the innings of 209 to the maiden century he scored in his very first international. That was the test against the West Indies in July. I mean, Charu, Jim, it's been quite some journey for Jaswal to, to reach this point, hasn't it? Because when he was just 11, he left his home and his parents in Uttar Pradesh and moved to Mumbai to chase that cricketing dream and train at the iconic Azad Maidan. And that's where he was spotted by the coach, Jawala Singh, who played a key role in what happened from there. And we are going to hear from him on the programme in a moment. Uh, but Charu, I mean, Jaswal really has had to work his way up to have this sort of early success with the test team. Well, it is a magnificent, inspirational story. And I've no doubt that sooner or later there will be a movie made about Jaiswal's rise from absolutely nothing to great stardom. I, I, I think for the moment, uh, and this is my wish for him, that he uh, continues to have a very level head on his shoulders, which is something he will require as he goes along on this massive road to fame. But just his cricket, really, I mean, it's, a, it's I think, a tribute to his hard work and, and uh, his... Uh, I suppose the fact that he sacrificed so much to be in Bombay with little or nothing with him, and I'm sure Jawala will give us more on that story later. But, you know, you, you have to wish him well. And, and the fact that he's scoring runs against good opposition, albeit, of course, at home for now, I think there is that little question mark that will remain for a while. I don't wish to be churlish at this point of time. When he gets big runs overseas, mm. I think people will start taking their hat off to him. Australia, maybe, or in South Africa, where they've never won a series, or even in England where the ball moves so much more. So there's more work ahead of him. But for the moment, all we can do is congratulate him for truly uh, uh, an innings that kept, kept India in the match and possibly won them the match because the next best score was next to nothing. Jim, I mean, this was only his sixth test match where he's got this double hundred, um, 19 fours and seven sixes in that 209 as well. How impressed have you been? And, and indeed, it's India who tour Australia next year, isn't it? Or later this year even. Yes, very impressive. I mean, just as Ollie Pope played the match defining winning innings in the first test, uh, Jaswal probably played the match defining innings in this game. Although I, I really think the difference in the game was Boomer's bowling. Um, and um, I think Jaswal will be blessing himself that um, in his first test, the opening bowlers were Jimmy Anderson, age 41, and Joe Root. Bowling off spin, <laughs> that will not happen again, I would have thought, once <laughs> he starts playing away from home. But uh, the difference was the batting in the game, the fact that India got enough runs uh, to put themselves well ahead and that England uh, couldn't quite do it this time, even though they've chased so well 
on a number of occasions. But um, fascinating series. If Coley uh, is not going to be playing in the in the next test, nor Jadeja, yeah. nor Boomer, oh, England are well and truly in the series now. Yeah, that's it. Those are the reports, aren't they? Suggestions Coley might not play any role uh, in the series. Um, but just to stick with Jaiswal, he rose to prominence, didn't he? The Under-19 World Cup in 2020 when he was the leading run scorer, then picked up by Rajasthan Royals in the IPL auction where in 2023 scored more runs than anybody else there and then set new records for the fastest 50 off just 13 balls as well. But he's shown an awful lot of resilience uh, to make it to the top. And I think, Cherry, that's what you were alluding to there, wasn't it? Um, so, yes, let's hear from his childhood coach who I've been speaking to, Jawala Singh, who first spotted Jaiswal when he was just 11 years old. So, uh, it was December uh, 2013. There was a game at Ajahn Medan because I'm running a cricket academy called Mumbai Cricket Club. So, there are around 22 pitches. So, my match was on some different pitch. And after some time, one left-handed batsman came in and uh, he started playing well. So I told my friend, like, this boy, see, he's playing well on the same surface. So my friend started saying, Yolabai, this boy is very poor. He stays alone in Mumbai and I'm very concerned about him. And just we were uh, talking about it and the boy uh, came out. So I walked towards him and just asked, Bita, what's your name? So he said, sir, my name is Yashashvi Jaiswal. So he was a very small kid, around 12. So I said, where do you stay? He said, sir, I stay in that uh, art. That is a tent, you know, one where the town mm -hmm. man sleep. So I said, why you live in tent? Where is your family? He said, nobody's here. Uh, so I asked, where is family? They, he said, like, they stay in a, a village called Bhadohi in Uttar Pradesh. And I'm here for cricket. So I said, why your father and mother is not supporting you? He said, uh, he can't do that. So I'm here. So I said, what do you need? You need any kind of help from me? Normally, I do. So, he said, no, sir, nobody are supporting me to play cricket. Everybody is telling, just go go to village. You are not able to play here. Now, my mind is very bad. I think I should go back to my village. So, I said, okay, do one thing. Come come to meet me uh, at my place. And before that, I asked, did you play any games? He said, yes, sir, I played one school game. And uh, I scored 200 runs. So, I was thinking <laughs> like this trying to impress me. So I said, okay, if you have scored 200 runs, show me the paper cuttings of proof. And uh, this is my card. Come to meet me at my place. That uh, that was Thursday. And that boy came to beat me on Thursday with two paper cuttings, putting in, you know, uh, in uh, plastic, like just folding like here and there in very unprofessional manner. I went in my past because in 1995, I came to Mumbai uh, to become a player, that time Sachin Tendulkar and Vinod Kamli was very, very famous. I wanted to become a player, so I left my place uh, at 13. And even same thing, I talked to my parents that I will do anything, but I will live in Mumbai. I will chase my dreams. And I was also in similar condition. So when so he was talking... yourself in him. Yes. So the, the way he was talking, it was similar my story. And then I thought, uh, this is some kind of, you know, destiny uh, that I was thinking to become a player and I really worked hard, I struggled a lot. And literally, I spent a lot of times on the grounds, I used to sleep on railway stations. So when he started talking, the story got connected to me. When I left playing cricket, I had one, uh, one dream that someday I will make an India player. I could not make, I will make an India player because when I was struggling, a lot of people criticized me. My own family, uh, you know, they backed me. But when I somebody comes, left his place around 12 or 13 and comes to place like Mumbai, there's a lot of challenges, stay, food, mental pressure, education. So when I was doing this, I used to think like, somebody, please come and help me. Please come and help me. My my agenda was to support Yashashvi Jaiswal because I have gone through a lot of pain. I lost my father uh, Mm -hmm. And he, when he was dying, he was saying, I, I send you Mumbai to make some name. Uh, I helped Yashashvi because I wanted to express my feeling in front of the world that it's very difficult to come and play. And so if you fail first inning, you have a second inning. So Yashashvi is my second inning. You mentioned the fact that he was sleeping in the, the tents of the ground staff of the Medan. Uh, there are stories about the fact that he was selling Pani Puri uh, to, to earn some money at that time as well. Are, are those stories true as well? Was that before you 
met him? Were you then supporting him? And was he able to get any support from his parents during the time he was with you? Uh, no, I, I'm not very much agree with that story because I've told a lot of times in front of media. He used to stay at Ken, that is true. And he did a lot of hardship. But it was not like he was a Pani Puri seller. There were a lot of stalls, like some fruit stalls, some Pani Puri stalls, some other stalls. So he, that time he was a kid. So he used to go to those stalls and people used to say, just stand for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, I will give you this money, that money. So that he has done. Felt yes, like a bit of pocket money. Pay. Yeah, that pocket money. But after 2013, uh, he stayed with me, my wife, my family. And I'm his legal guardian. Their father and mother has given me uh, uh, you know, authority. And everywhere I look after him, he stay in my flat. Uh, before 2013, his parents used to see, send him some money, you know, 1,000 rupees, 1,500 rupees, like, but that that could have not been enough. So he could have yeah. done small, small things, but he was not like a Pani Puri seller. It takes tremendous yeah. resilience to to stick it out. So it's even up to the point when you then met him and, and took him under your wing. What were the particular cricketing qualities then which you saw develop uh, in the course of coaching him? Well, Yashashvi was my madness, to be very frank with you, because I had a desire that when I took him, there were two things which I saw. First, that he had a good temperament, that he used to play long innings, that was his skill. So I think his temperament and trust what I had on him and the way I used to think when I was a player, I wanted him to uh, you know, train in that manner. So that is how two things really works. And he's obviously, I mean, he's already achieved incredible things, Rajasthan Royals. What was it like for you when he first made that debut international 100 on his debut, but then the double 100 against England? Well, he always made me proud as a coach. I'm really uh, proud as a coach, as a guardian, as a father figure. Whenever he does well in cricket, I re I'm really happy uh, because what I, I put on him uh, as a coach, he really you know, return me uh, with his performance. So, yes, as a player, I am really happy and I'm grateful that I become the part of this journey. He become the part of my journey. And what he and me, uh, uh, you know, were trying to achieve coming from so far, leaving our parents, uh, we are doing so. Of course, we are proud. And there was one piece of advice I read that you had given him when he was facing you know, a lot of competition in Mumbai, in those early days where you were talking about how he should you know really focus on his his own game and talent can you can you remember those words about how he was worried about how he was going to break break into the team i always give him the example because i have played a lot of cricket with a lot of legendary cricketers i've learned these qualities and i pass this quality to him i always tell like don't think somebody else will fail and you will pass don't think somebody will do bad and you will do good and go there always Put pressure on you that somebody should do well and you do better than him. So people should think that this guy can give better results. So no one takes place of any other person. Your performance takes you somewhere. So no nobody is competitor of you. You are competitor of your own self where you can improve your performances and that performance uh, earns the place in the team. So that's why my mantra. And Javal, you saw that talent in um, the, the young kid in the on the Maidan. Now he's playing Test cricket for India. Do you get a sense? Do you hear much from his parents? And whether you know what they feel about the success he's made, having left home as young as he did? It's a proud feeling as a parents. Being a parent, uh, they are very happy, and they should be. Yeah. And where do you believe his ambitions lie? How how far can he go in this game of cricket? Um, I given you an interview in 2018 <laughs> that this boy can become the ne next legend and I think I'm on the track. 2018 when he got selected for under-19 uh, Indian team, you know, his mother called me and said, Sir, thank you, he's playing for India under-19. I said, no, this is just one of the benchmark. I think he has a long journey and I am happy that uh, with performances, he's always proving me right. Javala, it's great to have you share your story and his story with us on Stump. Thanks so much for coming on the show. 
Yeah, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Well, that was Javala Singh, the childhood coach of Yashasvi Jayaswal. Um, a fascinating listen. And Charu, yeah, he predicts there that Jayaswal will be a legend for India. Too much too soon? Well, he's shown enormous ability, hasn't he? So we've got to wish the best for him. And I think he's, he's being guided correctly as well. So I'm not so sure that he is one of those fading or potentially fading stars because he has so much more. The hunger in him would have been an Everest kind of hunger. And, and I don't think it's going to be satisfied by just a few centuries here and the other. He's there uh, for the long haul. And luckily for him, he uh, is playing cricket at a time when there's T20s all over the place. There's one day internationals, there's test matches. You know, he plays his test cricket pretty fluently as well. So with this kind of T20 atmosphere, uh, I can't see him not do well in some form or the other for years to come. So I think it's only the beginning. Yeah. And Jim, we heard him mention uh, the parents there. We learned from chatting to Javala just after the interview that with the IPL money that was earned from Rajasthan Royals, Javala helped to then buy a flat so that uh, Jaiswal's parents and, and siblings now live in this flat in Mumbai and he lives with them. Uh, but it's just a, it's an extraordinary story, isn't it? And, and Javala talking about Jaiswal being his own second innings. It is an extraordinary story and uh, he's got a lot of talent. So it's wonderful that he can look after his family in this way. And hopefully it's the start of something extraordinary. And he's a very elegant left-hand batsman. And most of India's great players have been right-handers. So it'll be interesting to see how his game develops. As uh, Charlie mentioned, once he gets away from playing at home and, and that more closeted environment uh, to the challenges of playing in England and Australia, um, we'll see what happens. But at the moment, he looks an exceptional player. And he's really uh, showing out in a, an Indian batting lineup that uh, for the uh, for so far in this series, as I said last time, they're batting like millionaires. So um, it's about time some other people stood up and made some runs as well. Finally on Stumped, the England men's physical disability cricket team has just finished a tour of India where they lost the T20 series but managed to win a game in India for the very first time. India took the series 3-2 and we can welcome two Stumped from the England side, top order bat Angus Brown. Angus, it is great to have you on. Um, I mentioned one, but it was two wins you got there in India. So having never beaten them on their own patch before, that must have felt like great progress. Yeah, it was a it was a pretty cool experience. Um, but uh, beating them uh, twice um, was a big big bonus for us. And actually, the last game, um, winning the final game at the biggest stadium in the world, was a big positive for us. Just leaving leaving them hopefully with a bit of a bad taste in their mouth, wanting to have us back. And um, <laughs> yeah, it helped us put a bit of momentum on the way back home. The series is organised by the Different Table Cricket Committee of India, which is supported by the BCCI. Uh, are mm -hmm. you hoping for tours such as these to become more regular or perhaps not just India with other countries? How's the schedule looking like? Yeah, I mean, the, the more we play cricket, the better we get and the more we enjoy it. Um, and the more we can show off to the world, actually, what we can do um, and hopefully we continue to grow. But um, out in India, the DCCI, um, supported by the BCCI, was brilliant. The facilities they gave us were exactly everything that we needed. Um, but the schedule is difficult to predict just because the cricketing world is obviously very busy at the moment. Um, but hopefully we can get them all back um, to England and hopefully get more and more countries playing. Um, but in the 2019, we played uh, a five um, with five teams, but obviously COVID came around. So the schedule is building itself back up. Um, but the support of the DCCI is, is huge. Um, and the, the support they showed us out whilst we are out in India Everything is looking really positive, uh, positive looking forward for us. Well, that was all we've got time for on this week's Stump. So I'll say thank you to Jim Maxwell and Charis Sharma and to all of you for listening. And we'll see you again next week. Bye for now.